Cool. Hey guys, welcome to Cricket Fanatics Magazine. And I thought I have to bring the big guy onto the onto the show today and speak to him because I've heard from quite a few fans that he's quite a legend in India. So he has quite a lot of uh, insight when it comes to the India team, of course, and the South African team. Welcome to the show, um, Eric. It's the first time, obviously, on the platform. And I'm really excited to speak to you. I know that Mark has been interviewing you quite a bit for our, for our digital magazines, but I thought we need to do a video interview, get some insight into the pro tiers and leading up to the India game. So first and foremost, welcome to the show and how are you doing? Yeah, thank you very much for the invitation. Yeah, no, doing well, thank you. Um, been traveling a little bit, but uh, enjoying the World Cup, enjoying the, the T20 in Rochester. So lots of stuff on the go at the moment to be watching. Yeah. What I've noticed, let's start with the CSA T20 Challenge, because I think it's a similar challenge that the pro tiers maybe face. Um, I've noticed that a lot of the power plays have not been maybe as we'd hope for. We'd want to obviously see a, a higher power plays, more runs scored. I know that South Africa struggle as well with the, with the swing delivery up front. What's your thoughts on how we can beat India? Uh, particularly, what parts of the game do you think that South Africa can have the edge on India or need to have the edge on India to be able to win the match? Yeah, I think the important thing is to um, look. Obviously, <clears throat> you, you need to understand the conditions. You need to play the conditions really well. I think that's going to be important. Playing at Perth, you know, I think you know it's very different to India. In India, you need to you need to really dominate the power play, and your rate can slow down if as conditions get tougher. But I think in Perth, you can be a little bit um, you can be a little more a little bit more patient and allow um, you you start to lay a platform when it comes to uh, batting in the power play on on Sunday. But I, I think it, I think really it's going to be, you know it's one of those things that's important in, in any game form of the game. But I think against India, it's important to do the simple things really well, keep them under pressure, get balls in good areas, and uh, force them to make the play, force them to make mistakes, not get caught up in in allowing them to dictate tactics whether you're batting or bowling. So from the weather conditions that I've looked at so far, um, there's no rain necessarily. Heavy rain predicted. It's about twenty percent. Um, these overcast conditions, of course, we're obviously playing a later game as well. So from South Africa's perspective, um, when it comes to the conditions, etc., obviously they're going to have to assess it. But say the, the, the conditions are like we expect them to do, what would you do with regards to the toss as a captain? It's a, it's, you know, I think it's one of those grounds where um, it really depends on how you feel about your team. Do you feel like you chase well? Do you feel like you... You defend well, you know. It, I don't think I don't think it's one of those situations where it absolutely dictates if you win the toss, you must. It's one of those one of those places where you can decide, you know, look at look at at what the night conditions will do, what will it do to the pitch, and and then make a decision from from that perspective. Um, I, I I wouldn't I, I don't think they'll be too disappointed to do either. And with regards to the lineup and, and, and picking an 11, I mean, on my preview, I spoke about having a full seam attack. I want to see everybody, Marco Jadson, Wayne Parnell, every the works and not have a spinner. But there are some fans that have said that they would like to see a spinner in the side, like Keshav Maharaj, for example, with the Braves. Um, what do you think South Africa should go with with regards to this, the, the 11? I, I think a spinner is always a, is a good idea. I, I, you know, you, you have got Andrew Malcolm who can, you can bowl some spin, but I think that a good spinner is, you know, someone like um, Maharaj doesn't necessarily need the ball to turn. You know, I always say that a spinner has got, um, he's got five weapons and he has, he's got, he's got obviously turn, he's got bounce, he's got drift, he's got the dip and, or the loop, whatever you want to call it, and the pace that he bowls. So, you know, you just use various, various of your weapons when, when the conditions uh, cause you to do that. And he's one of those bowlers that doesn't need the ball to turn to be effective. So I, I do think they'll. I, I would be very surprised if they if they went in uh, without a spinner, uh, as I would be surprised if they went with two spinners. I think that we can expect to see either Marco or Lungengidi come back. Um, that probably would be would be my my choice. But I, I would I would expect it to be, there to be a spinner. I think that's one of the things that uh, Paki, oh, Pakistan, goodness me, India have got an advantage of. They've got a very balanced attack with with Hardik Pandya being the fourth seaman and that allows them to bowl two spinners. And again, both of them. Um, Particularly, actually, Patel doesn't necessarily need the ball to turn to be effective. So I'm, I'm expecting the teams to both have spinners. Now you know there's a massive debate on on the batting and how we should approach it in the power play and all of that, and especially with regards to Timba Bavuma and Riza Hendricks has been a lot of debate. Um, but when it comes to, I'm, I'm presuming that Timba Bavuma will start. The importance of a captain. Can you speak to me a little bit about the importance of a captain before we get on the batting side of things? 
The leader is an important member of the of a team. You know, he's is uh, he plays he plays a role not just not just necessarily in the actual tactical decision making, but just in terms of being on the the field with his team and being able to lead them. And there's no doubt that he's be, he has been uh, a firm leader of the the side for a while. He, there was a bit of a gap when he was injured, and um, they were without him. But I think. Yeah, yeah, I'd be surprised if we went without the leader. He plays, you know, it's particularly when it comes to these games when, when it is high pressure. We're very fortunate with the result of Zimbabwe beating Pakistan. It means it's not a must-win match. Uh, but nevertheless, you still want to want to get this under the belt and put yourself in a position where you qualify as soon as you possibly can. And in those situations, you need your leader to be there. The one that's that's got uh, the calm word in your ear, the one that is you know, the one is able to to make those decisions under pressure. Um, you know he's been he's been the leader for a while now. So it, the more the, the short and more short the game, somehow it's become more um, not only te technical and tactical, but also high pressure. And I think that's when your leader plays a big role. Now talking about him, obviously he's struggling for form at the moment. I'm going to presume that he's going to play in this match. And how do you feel that he needs to approach it? Um, do you feel that Perth is a perfect ground for him to find form again? Yeah, let me just let's just talk a second about his selection because I think it obviously is a, it is a, a big debate at the moment, and and I and I do think that he's he's probably the person in the best position to make the call. You know, he he's the one that feels what he's what he's um, how he's in the nets. He he'll be part of the he'll be part of the debate as to whether he plays or not. He's part of the selection. So you know, you you often as a coach have players in the nets where they're looking good and they're just not getting runs in the middle, and then you you've got to, you back them if you if you have belief in them. So I think that process will take place. But yes, I think it's a good point you make. Like I said, you know, at the beginning, I think Perth is one of those places where you can be patient up front. You don't necessarily need to put yourself under pressure to be you're going at hammer and tongs of the power play. Um, you saw the other day how Stoinis was able to um, come back in later in the innings and, and score runs a lot freer. But yeah, the, the, the new ball is is tough to score against, and you can be a little more patient. So hopefully, um, he he allows himself from that perspective to. To bat, to bat through it, and then and then obviously be there for the rest of the tournament. You know, often in these situations, as a coach, I say to a batsman like him, go out there and score a bad fifty. Just get yourself in and, and, and dig yourself out, and then it suddenly comes. And he's he's forced to have someone like Quentin Cock at the other end who's playing with a bit of freedom. And then you bat for your partner. You know, a lot of people also forget that uh, they look at individual strike rates, but it's important to look at the partnership strike rates. So if one's going at one hundred and the other one's at two hundred, you're doing one fifty. And, and then you play a role. So I think I think from that perspective, there's there are ways they can get him through this this obvious patch that he's he's, he's in at the moment. And uh, hopefully it is on Sunday, tomorrow. And from a coach's perspective, when it comes to batting and playing swing, what are the key elements of playing swing in um, opening, especially against a new ball playing swing? Yeah, again, there's no one there's no one answer. You know, the, <laughs> the batsmen do different things, but. When you're playing against someone like Bhuvanesh Kumar or, or um, Ashdeep, they, they are quality spinners, not the quality swing bowlers. Not only do they swing the ball, but they swing the ball both ways, and you know, with great control, it, it does make it incredibly difficult. So let's not let's not pretend to try and ignore that fact. Uh, there, there are various things you can do. You know, a lot, a lot of batsmen what they try and do is, is get out the crease, but neither of them are really quick. So maybe getting out of the crease is a is a way to, to do it, but not on the move to, to be. To, to take up a position out the crease, or to move early and get uh, to get to get forward, or outside of stump. So if you're going to get hit with the in swinger, then it's going to be hit outside the line, and then all you have to worry about is the way swing. You know, there's that there's that sort of option um, that they can have as well. Um, but you know, other batsmen will just try and play the ball late, try and see the swing and play it late. But again, I think that's that's fine when you're playing against somebody that swings in one direction. But when these guys swing the ball as they are in both directions, it does make it tough. But you have to just remember. That the ball doesn't swing much more than two, two and a half overs, maybe three overs, and you just have to get through that. And I think that, as we said, Perth is a place where you can be a patient up front. So it might just be a case of let's be patient, take what we get. But those are those are options you can have. Uh, you know, either get out the crease or, or get out sort of stump and play from there. Now I can't have an interview with you and not speak about the bowling aspect of it. Uh, South Africa have a very, very, very good bowling attack, um, a world-class bowling attack, so much variations with regards to um, bounce, pace, um, variations with Lungingiri, of course, the pace of Andrik Nokia. Wh who do you think will be the key bowler in this particular unit? Um, and, and how do you think they should approach their, their, their bowling um, mentality going into this game? Uh, yeah, I think I think it's gonna it's it's got to be a, a not a, a team effort. I think everyone's got to you know 
bring their part to this to the situation because if, if one of them gets taken down then it, it puts pressure on the other so I, I do think it is a wicket that does it does assist the pace bowlers but it's also important you don't get carried away and that you you stick to the simple stuff I, you know I, I, I still firmly believe that the more the wicket gives you in terms of what suits you the less you have to do the less you have to try and the less you have to be innovative so keeping it simple really I, I know that is a it's a bit of a cliche but it really is if, if you get hit off a good ball, if you hit the if you hit the bales, which is which is obviously a key delivery for a for a good pace bowler, and you get hit for four, it doesn't mean you move. You stay there. It's that sort of patience that's going to be important. Not allow the batsman to dictate. So a lot of guys get hit off that line, hit off that length, and then they start playing with their variations. And what's happened is the batsman dictated the terms. And often what the batsman has done is he's put you under pressure because he doesn't want you to bowl there. So I think that patience is very 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 important. And then the other thing is, you know, I, I firmly believe as well, and if you look at someone like Josh Hazelwood, for example, he's, he runs up, he's, he's become an exceptional T20 cricketer. Um, and what they've done is they've said, we, we, he was with us at CSK, in fact, and, and certainly what we did there is we said, you bowl as Josh Hazelwood bowled. Don't try and change. And what we'll do is we will then set a field to accommodate the way that you bowl. And I think that's also important. You know, I, I, I don't see Anrich Malki, for example, being hit down the ground. Well, let's have a mid-off and mid-on wider. Let's make sure the square fields are a little bit, a little bit um, uh, more, more, uh, a little more protection, and try and use those sort of ideas and tactics to create pressure on the on the opposition and try and make them hit into areas that don't want to hit. Um, so yeah, I think I think the patience of of a simplistic play, and and because a ball gets hit of a good ball, because a boundary gets hit of a good ball, does not mean you change. If you do, you align the batsman to dictate. Do not let them dictate. Stick to your plan and be patient with it. Now, let's get into the opposition. Uh, India, a very dangerous team. Um, Virat Kohli finding his form at the perfect time. But who are the players that you think are going to give South Africa probably the most hassle? Well, you could throw, you could throw a dart at, the, at, the, at, the, at that team list. And whatever name it hits is potentially going to give you a... But, you know, I think the South Africa is the same. I, I think we're a very well-balanced team. You know, it, it, you don't know where the, where the, the performance is going to come from. And, you know, I, I, I always say, whether it's batting or bowling, you know, it's, it's a little bit like, it's, it's a bit like you, you, you set up your, your second half. For example, we took wickets in the power play in the last game, and that brought the spinners in, into, the, into the match, taking four wickets against Bangladesh. But it's because the seam is set it up. Quinton de Kock, Riley Rousseau, Temba Bavuma, whoever gets going, if they lay the foundation, that brings Markram, it brings uh, Stubbs, it brings... Um, David Miller into the into the game, and I think that's that's an important aspect of, um, of of how our teams work. But you're right. I mean, Virat Kohli at this stage playing exceptionally well. Rohit Sharma's been getting some fifties. Um, we still haven't seen the best of Kahul Rao. I mean, he's an exceptional T20 cricketer when he gets going right throughout. Su Su um, Yadav as well. I mean, Sudha Kama He's also he's an incredible player. So he just there aren't holes. The one perhaps the one question. You know, whether, whether they've got... The, I mean, Dennis Cardiff's like to bat the back end of a T20 game. Actually, Patel, they've got a sort of... A, at, at six, they've got a few question marks. Well, who bats depends on when the wickets fall, when number six walks in. But Dennis Cardiff prefers to control the back end of the inning. So there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing really in that lineup that's, that, that makes one think you, you, um, uh, you, you, you sit. In the past, Mohamed Shami was an exceptional new ball bowler. And they've now got... Um, Bubin, well, Bubish has been for a year, but Ashdeep's just added a new dimension to it as well. And we've, you know, over the years, Akshay Patel and, and Ravi, and, Ravi, Andran, uh, uh, Ravi Ashwin has, has always been a great bowler. So they aren't really holes. Um, but I think, I think controlling the, the playmaker of, of Virat Kohli uh, and, and um, uh, Ravi Sharma up front to not allow the foundation to be set is going to be the key. So that to me would be where I target because if they lay a foundation, the top three lay a foundation, then we're going to find ourselves in trouble. I'm just crossing fingers that uh, someone like Andrew Nokia, who has a lot of big scalps to his name, he tends to take the big wickets a lot. So I'm hoping that he can do it again for South Africa. Um, I, I want to see him calm, though. I want to see him calm. And, uh, you know, I, I understand all the passion and all those things, but it is about just being calm and getting the ball in good areas, just with the same sort of effort and, and, and pace, but but not get caught up in the, in the moment. Just get the ball in good areas, keep them under pressure, make them hit you off good areas. I would love to see us hit the bales in the power play for 36 balls and see what happens. Yeah, because I've noticed that that happens a lot with fast bowlers, um, particularly the younger ones. Uh, they kind of bowl all over the place because they don't know where to bowl because they can go so quickly to the boundary. So I fully get your your thought process over there. Just finally, yeah, too Eric. Often, I... too, too, often I, 
too often we see our tactics are plan A is fast and plan B is faster. And that's, that's not the way the game should be played. Yeah, I agree with you. Let's let's finish this off with something a little bit about the future. Um, I want to talk about first-class cricket particularly and the importance of our youngsters playing first-class cricket for their T20 game. I've heard the likes of David Warner, etc. say about, speak about how the first-class cricket has helped his T20 game actually. And um, I'm, I'm a bit worried that our youngsters are a little bit too um, eccentric away, in a way with the, with the way they play. Sometimes they need a little bit of patience. <laughs> um, but I don't know if that is the way that cricket's going or whatever, but how important is first-class cricket? Do you think that the likes of the Abrevis of the world and the Jordan Hermans and all of these great guys that are that are performing so well, these youngsters, Ethan Cunningham and, and Daniel Smith, do you think that first-class cricket will help their T20 game? Or do you think that they should focus maybe on just being the best T20 player that they can be? Eccentric. I've never heard the words eccentric used to the way they play, but that's a new one. I'm going to use that if I may in the future. Um, I, I, look, I agree with you. Being the best T20 cricketer that you possibly can be would include playing that. So I have a, I have a theory about T20 cricket that, that, that I, I take into a lot of the coaching that I do and the way that I work. Um, you know, I, I believe that, just as an example, when Glenn McGrath started playing T20 cricket, he was bowling with the absolute control and, and skill that he had. But he was bowling against, against top test batsmen because at that stage there wasn't T20 cricket and they had just started playing T20 cricket. So when he ran up and bowled top of all stump, um, good lines and length, they were able to play it because of their techniques were, were, were good enough. If Glenn McGarr came back into the modern game, he would be very effective because the modern technique can't score off that area. Very, a lot of, especially left hand is very close face, very open face. You think of a very sharp punt. They aren't able to access, as I said earlier, um, of a good length, mid on, mid off, the way that a top test cricketer can do. So, so the foundation on which you lay any any form of the game must be on that ability to hit the ball down the ground, hit the ball on top of the bounce, hit the ball um, straight past the bowler, play with it with with uh, with those kind of with those kind of hands and that kind of face of the bat, and from there the rest flows. So I think with absolutely without doubt in my mind that playing that format will make them be T20 cricketers. So if you say focus on being the T20 cricket best T20 cricketer they possibly can be. I completely agree, but part of that is playing four-day cricket because that technique is going to stand them in good stead. Because I think that's what the ball is going to go now more and more to that control and keep them under pressure. That's exactly why Josh Hazelwood is as effective as he is because the techniques today are not able to play it. So about the CSA T20 Challenge, the last question of the year: um, Who stood out for you so far? Who has impressed you in the T20 Challenge so far? Um, there are a few guys, you know, I, I haven't watched that, to be honest, to be, okay, to be, to be completely fair. Um, I've actually just been up there now because I'm involved with, with, with Johannesburg Super Kings. And I went to go and visit the Johannesburg Super Kings cricketers just to get to know them. Because I, you know, some of them I've worked with, some of them I haven't, but just to touch base and try and get ahead of the game. So, you know, we're two months away from the tournament. So I've watched them mostly for obvious reasons. Um, but there's been some, there's been some good performances and particularly from some of the bowlers, you know, I think. From our side, Jero could see he's taken two four wicket balls. Another day, Berger's great to see him back. Um, Kayla has been been getting some wickets. He's got bowled lots of dot balls. So you know, Yanaman Milan do us deploy some games for the JSK guys because those guys are really focused on. But I think just all around, there's been um, Marshall's been playing well. stan has been hitting some good balls all the way through the tournament. There's, there's been guys that have have been able to to score some big runs. It's been a little bit disrupted with the with the weather, which has been unfortunate. So games when they, the moment they shorten, they become a little bit. It's not, I wouldn't say artificial, but they certainly they do take something away from the, the character of the game. But all around, been some very good performances. Mm -hmm. Excellent, Eric. Thanks a lot for joining me um, and and giving me this little preview. I'm I'm going to be posting it very soon. To the guys out there, please support us here. Like, subscribe, click the notification bell. Do all of those type of things. Download our issue of Cricket Fanatics magazine, 100% free, straight to your inbox every month. Um, we'll put the link on the screen as well as in the description as well. But um, uh, good luck to to the protests, of course. Um, and we obviously are hoping that they're going to get a victory. But thanks a lot, Eric, for, for, for coming on the show. And guys, don't forget to join our review show after the game as well, because we will be straight after the game. We will be live for a review show. Eric, thanks a lot for, for coming on the show and giving us your insight. Pleasure. Nice to chat. All the Thank best. You.